Good day. Hard science fiction is a genre that I often find rather disappointing. So many hard SF writers are massively cynical or cannot write an entertaining character to save their life. So many hard SF writers focus on the tech, or if they focus on us squishies, they say how little better than animals we are and that we should embrace extinction. Thankfully, there are many good, but somewhat obscure, hard SF writers out there, and the hard SF writer we are taking a look at today is Travis S. Taylor and his novel, Von Neumann's War. I discovered this novel at a half-price bookstore in 2007 and was hooked on the premise of humanity fighting against Von Neumann probes. And just what is a Von Neumann probe? Well, it's a self-replicating machine. There have been a number of stories where such things get out of hand. For if a machine were to be unleashed on the galaxy, would it stop harvesting resources even if it arrived in an inhabited system? The very name and concept of the novel is Hard SF. The Von Neumann probe has been seen in mainstream SF here and there, but often not by the name. John von Neumann studied the concept of the self-replicating machine, but he never actually applied it to spacecraft. The von Neumann probe concept is an interesting one. The Milky Way is a huge galaxy, and it would and will take a great deal of time to explore. So if you were to send out just a couple of probes and have them replicate in each star system that they stop in, theoretically you could explore the galaxy fairly quickly. In theory, at least. Enter Travis S. Taylor, a fairly obscure hard SF writer that is one of Bane's stable of writers. I personally have never been a big fan of his due to the fact that he writes such information-dense novels that are almost more tech than character, and generally what characters there are are more often than not Gary Stews that are dead sexy, super athletic, and of course super smart. So smart, in fact, that while kicking the crap out of the Predator, they can solve the equations for faster-than-light travel. More often than not, his lead characters come off as completely obnoxious. Not so in Von Neumann's War. What we have here is yet another great example of Bane science fiction. I read this novel a short time after Into the Looking Glass, so I was prepared to see a novel that actually had interesting characters that were not from the bloody west coast. This is more of a cerebral novel, and while there are indeed a few good scenes of fighting, most of the fighting takes place in the mind, and most of the novel is centered around building stuff. The novel starts up with the albedo of Mars increasing. Uh, what the hell is that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Albedo is the measure of the diffuse reflection of solar radiation out of the total solar radiation received by an astronomical body. Got all that? Good, because that's what kicks off the plot. Some astronomers discover this and set out to build a probe to check out why Mars is getting brighter. The novel delves into the difficulty of building a probe and sending it millions of miles to another planet. The probe itself is designed primarily in a Hooters bar in Huntsville, Alabama. Yes, you heard that right. People in the South are actually smart, despite what certain media outlets would lead you to believe. The probe is sent to the Red Planet only for it to be drained of power, but before they lose contact, they see an alien machine. Eventually, it's determined that self-replicating alien machines have been building random cities all over the solar system, and that they are headed straight to Earth. The main characters are a scientist and a military officer, both of which are quite entertaining to read and do not reach Gary Stu status. Eventually, the Von Neumann machines reach Earth and they touch down in France of all places and start destroying everything in sight. You cannot shoot them as they just suck up the bullets. Eventually, it's determined that they prefer to go after refined metals. And then, the US military starts using explosive paintballs. And yes, eventually the big guy in one of the squads gets a big-ass paint gatling gun. For most of the novel, humanity is on the back foot, and the novel gets pretty dark in places, but never grim derp. Since there is no sequel, I will forgo telling you how it ends. All I will say is that it is epic. Von Neumann's War is a great standalone novel with great characters, great writing, and unlike other Travis S. Taylor books, 
he keeps the science to a minimum and thus ensures that the narrative is actually entertaining. Many expectations are positively subverted, and yes, one of the scientists is indeed a former Hooters waitress. The novel gets into the inner workings of the space program and the politics therein. The whole novel can really be summed up in one phrase. Science! Hell yeah! And so long as humans use their intelligence, anything and everything is possible. And so, I am General Lotz, wishing you good march up country and good Vorpal Blade, or whatever makes you happy. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, and if you can, please consider supporting me on Patreon so that I can continue bringing you this awesome content.